thanks everybody for allowing Pick and Pay uh, to come up here for the first TEDx Wakanda. So it's a real privilege to uh, be able to be a part of this and it's, it's really, really exciting. My name is Ross Shelton and this is my esteemed colleague uh, Teko Swartboy. And we're just going to chat to you about one or two things that uh, we try and do as a company within the community. I know it's not everything that we do, but uh, it's just a small little snapshot of one or two of the things that uh, we feel is necessary within our community and it goes unnoticed because we don't go out there and project it to the world. I think some things you can and I just think some things you can't and this is just a few of the things that we keep in-house but I'd like to share it with you today so that uh, you get an idea of, of where we are as a company. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Teko and he's going to chat to you about our soup kitchen drive and uh, the soccer stars that he started a couple of years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, pick and Pay Soup Kitchen. Uh, pick and Pay Soup Kitchen, what we do as Pick and Pay, we go to different areas around the community, uh, trying to help those ones that are struggling. Uh, for us, the main focus is to give back to, those, to the people the customers that are there, the other patients, because they are the ones that are going to pick and pay uh, to buy them. So, so for us is is to give back. I won't be long. I won't be long. I'm short. Uh, so, Fire Youngsters Football Club uh, is a club that I started in 2011. But the idea, I had the idea on 2009, but it only started in 2011. And a small thing it was I started with 11 kids, and then now we've got like 108 kids that we are working with. So it was very difficult for me because now I had to go to work, and then after work, I have to go to the gym to conduct the practice, and then I have to do other things, you know. So, as time went by, I was struggling to get sponsorship. That's where I sat down with pick and pay bosses, uh, trying to give them uh, the presentation about the sofa youngsters, what it's all about, you know. Because the idea, it was not only about the soccer, it was also about the academics. You see, that's when also I approached the Rose University community, community engagement, whereby on a weekly basis they were assisting the boys with their academics. You see. So in 2013, that's where Pick and Pay helped the, the club, sponsoring them. If we've got the awards, they were doing like everything till now, you see. So it's a for me, when we were doing the, when I was starting the club, it was not only about me. You see, it was about me. I was not like getting anything from it, you know. You see, but it was only about helping those boys that are are sitting around our areas. They're doing wrong things, you know. Trying to minimize the crime. That was the only, the main focus for me to to start the club. You see. But it has worked very well for us because at least I'm not gonna say or lie to say there's no crime. You see, there is crime, but at least if 108 people are not involved there, you know, just imagine now if like we didn't start the sofa, it was 108 people maybe that were gonna be involved in those wrong things. Thanks, Echo. Um I think what Tech was trying to sum up there is that there's a lot of a lot of things happening in the background within our community that uh, sometimes the general public don't get to see. You know, when it comes to these soup kitchen drives, um, the poverty out there is is extreme. And what we're trying to do is we understand that we can't solve hunger within our community, but at least we try. You know, we want to get out there and we want to try and support the community. We want to try and be out there and help those that uh, maybe cannot help themselves. And if we do that, then we could possibly inspire others to do the same. You know, Raymond Ackman, the founder, said that doing good was good business. That wasn't uh, for profits 
or for dividends at the end of the year, that was going out there and servicing your community. He was a, a, a strong, strong advocate of making sure that uh, we look after each other. Because without the community, obviously pick and pay cannot function, and we try and give back to the community as much as possible. Because without the community, there, just, there is no pick and pay. But often people are forgotten about. And on the one aspect, we have the uh, old age home. And this is people that have raised people like myself, people like Tech, or people like you sitting in the audience here today. And they are, they are stuck in these old age homes and they are forgotten about. Uh, I've, I've had chats with lots of these people where they say that their, their family are still alive and they haven't visited them for, for months, if not years sometimes, which is exceptionally sad because, you know, it's a wealth of experience that, that is sitting there and, and nobody bothers to just spend a little bit of time with them. So, you know, we try and as a company go out there and, and spend time with these people, try and pick their brains, try and see if maybe they couldn't come up with a better way to service the community. But on the other end of the spectrum, we have uh, the orphanage. And, you know, this is, this is kids that, that Tekel has now identified, not all of them, but, you know, some of them, and has said, Yo, you know, he, he has kids with no parents, no real future in life. What can I do as an individual to try and inspire these people, to try and give them a better future, to try and help educate them, to try and set them on the right path. And that's, that's what we are really essentially trying to do as Pick and Pay. We know we cannot change the world, but maybe we can start within our own community. Because charity ultimately starts at home. You know, and if we're not prepared to do it, how can we expect others to do it? So, you're going from one aspect to the other. These are children without, without any parents, without any guidance, without any help. And sometimes we just go out there and, and we just want to pick a soccer ball with them. We just want them to be kids again. And from that, they can move from there into Tekel's club. Uh, they can get set on the right path. And maybe one day, they might inspire others. Uh, so that, that's really what we're trying to achieve as a, as a company, is, is try and not only inspire kids, but to try and inspire others uh, to do the same. Uh, one of the other things that we try and do, and I know we're jumping around a little bit here, is... There's a lot of people out there that do thankless work. Um, we talk about the taxi drivers who get up every morning early to try and pick up gentlemen like myself or tech or, or other people that need to get to work on time and nobody ever says thank you. Nobody just says, Tismania, you know, thank you so much for getting up in the bitter cold, for coming to pick me up so that I can get to work, so that I can service my community. So what we do is whenever it's cold or, or we get an opportunity, we try and get the guys a cup of coffee or a, or a soup and a roll, you know, just to say thank you. Just to say well done on what you're doing within the community. And it's little things like this that, you know, nobody wants to brag about, nobody wants to go out there and say, you know, look at what we're doing, we're such good boys. But, you know, if we, if we pass that on to them, they might potentially pass that on to somebody else. So we try and help as much as we can, we try and, and motivate as much as we can, we try and just go out there and make people feel special and make people feel like they are noticed, ultimately, at the end of the day. Uh, one of the last things I just want to chat about is a project that we have started in conjunction with the local municipality, uh, fixing the potholes. I'm sure, as you know, Grahamstown uh, has its fair share of, uh, of crevasses that we are trying to fix. and. This is not something that we wanted to do over and above the municipality. We wanted to partner with the municipality and say, guys, we understand the struggle. We're a local business. Uh, we want our town to thrive and uh, we want people to come to our town. Because if people don't come to our town, then, you know, it, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for everybody. It's going to be difficult for the people that reside in the town. It's going to be difficult for businesses. It's going to be difficult for people that maybe have scholarships at the schools like DSG. Thank you so much for coming through, guys. It's a real privilege to have you here today. Um, so we want to try and do as much as we can within our community. And we feel little things like this. When people drive past, they say, oh, there's pick and pay fixing the potholes. I wonder what I could do. I wonder, I wonder if the business owner of PG Glass couldn't drive past and say, you know what, I want, I want to fix somebody's, somebody's window today. Not because... You know, I'm going to get anything out of it, but just because I know it's going to help that person. It could be a school, it, it could be an orphanage, it could be anybody. So what we're trying to do here is not to showcase ourselves. What we're trying to do is actually to inspire other people. And ultimately, that's, 
That's what we're here for as a business, and it's to it's to serve the community. Because without the community, there just there just is no business. So they are synonymous hand in hand together. So thank you very much for having us up here today. It's been an absolute privilege to talk to you. Thank you, uh, Nombolelo and Vuyo, and uh, the TEDx team. Thank you very much, and uh, it's been an absolute privilege. Thank you. Thank you.